my name is Maya and I work at Facebook on team for iterative and graph processing. And today I'm going to talk to you about scaling uh, collaborative filtering to Facebook data using Apache Jira. So in this talk, I'll start by giving you a quick introduction to Giraffe, which is a tool that we often use for uh, doing uh, iterative and uh, graph analytics on, on top of our large data. After that, we'll dig in deeply into collaborative filtering. I'll describe the problem, uh, talk about how it is often approached, and then present our solution. I'll also talk about how we do uh, user recommendations on top of output of collaborative filtering. Uh, I'll talk about how large data sets we can handle, compare our performance with Spark MLlib, and conclude in the end. So Apache Giraffe is a powerful distributed platform that we use for iterative and graph processing on our massive data sets. For us at Facebook, that means over a billion vertices and up to a trillion edges. Uh, Apache Giraffe operates on top of graphs, so whatever kind of problem you have, you need to map it to a graph using primitives which Giraffe provides. Uh, these primitives are vertex IDs and values related to vertices, as well as edges and val values related to them. So in, um, in Facebook language, this could mean uh, vertices would be users on Facebook, vertex data would be some information about the users, like their favorite color, uh, edges would be friendships on Facebook, and edge weights could be strength, strengths of these friendships. Uh, the approach of Apache Giraffe to iterative processing in the, is different than MapReduce because in MapReduce, uh, when you have many iterations, each of these iterations uh, becomes one job. Uh, and Giraffe allows you to iterate through data as many times as you'd like and uh, uses uh, message passing between uh, the machines to communicate during these iterations. So I'll give you just a basic overview of Giraffe workflow. Um, you have a set of machines which you want to use to run your job on. We call them workers. Uh, and you have vertices of your graph which get automatically distributed across these machines. Uh, you have edges between vertices and now a job consists of certain number of iterations. Uh, each of these iterations, we call them super steps. And in them, each vertex can do some kind of processing. It can modify its own value, it can alter the graph, and it can send messages to other vertices inside of the graph. After every vertex has done its computation, uh, there is a global barrier ensuring that all the messages from that super step have been delivered, and the next super step starts. And then in the next super step, vertices can again do any kind of computation, and they can consume messages which they received in previous super step, send new messages, and so on. This is just a basic model. Over time, we extended it with many uh, different features to support many use cases. And I'll talk about some extensions we made specifically for collaborative filtering later during the talk. So with this overview of Giraffe, I'll jump straight into collaborative filtering. As many of you probably know, collaborative filtering is a technique for predicting users' interests based on interest of many other users. And the basic idea behind it is that we, if we have two users uh, who have similar opinions on a few topics, then they probably have similar opinion on some other topic as well. Uh, and the problem became very popular with Netflix prize competition for predicting uh, user ratings on movies just based on previous uh, user movie ratings. But it can, apply, can be applied in many other domains. For example, on Facebook, we could apply it on pages the user may like. So say I like Disney, roller coasters, Disneyland and Six Flags, and Alex likes Disney and roller coasters, it is more likely he'll like these other two pages as well, and he might get them as recommendations on Facebook. Uh, the way this problem is often approached is by using matrix factorization. So we have a set of users, a set of items, and the matrix, usually very sparse, with known user to item ratings. And what we want is to predict missing values inside of this matrix, which are basically ratings from user to items which we don't know nothing about. So uh, in order to do this, we represent each user and each item as a vector of features. Uh, and the goal for these feature vectors is that when we take any user item pair, the inner product of these two feature vectors gives us a value inside of the matrix. And once these values from the matrix are closely matched by the inner products of these vectors, the, uh, the assumption is that missing values inside of the matrix can also be approximated by the inner products of these vectors. 
so uh, in most cases, <laughs> is <Mug> <laughs> uh, this is the only formula on the slide, so <laughs> I promise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, in most cases, uh, like you can, you cannot exactly match the values from the matrix, and uh, that's why you use an objective function to uh, which you're trying to iteratively solve. Um, like here, the important part is just the left part, where x and y are user and item feature vectors, and r are known ratings. So as you can see, like you're trying to minimize the differences between known ratings and these inner products. The regularization part is just there to prevent uh, any feature values from becoming large and uh, preventing uh, numerical issues which you might get because of that, but like the main part is the, the left part. Um, and as I said, there are a few iterative approaches to solving this. Uh, Two most common ones are stochastic gradient descent and alternating least squares. So they both go through all the ratings uh, and keep iterating on that in some way. So stochastic gradient descent, what it does is it goes through each rating and moves both user and item feature vectors slightly in the direction of gradient to get a smaller error on that rating. Uh, while alternating least squares uh, alternate between updating user feature vectors and item feature vectors. Uh, so in one uh, iteration, it would say the item feature vectors which I have are fixed, and I'm going to find the best possible values for user feature vectors, which minimize the value of this formula, and then in the next iteration, it switches. Uh, now, the way this is commonly solved in, uh, in uh, platforms which have similar model as Giraffe does is by representing this as bipartite graph. So you have a graph where uh, users and items are vertices, and you have connections between vertices who are user and item pairs for which ratings are known. And the weights of these, uh, of these edges is the rating between that user and item. And now the way that the algorithm works is that in each iteration you are sending the feature vectors across uh, the edges in the graph. Uh, so for example, in stochastic gradient descent, both users and items are sending their feature vectors to all their neighbors. So you get, um, in the next super step, you're getting a new user, you have feature vectors of all the items for which ratings are known, and then you can iteratively, uh, like, iterate through these messages and update the value of user feature vector. In alternating least squares, you would be, in one super step, only items would send their feature vectors to users, and then users get all the item feature vectors and update their value. In the next iteration, they switch roles. Now, there are a few problems with this uh, solution. Uh, first of all, the data sent per iteration is very large. Uh, as we are sending feature vectors across each of the edges in the graph, uh, the amount of network traffic required for doing single iteration is proportional to number of known ratings times the size of features. Uh, the memory required uh, is about the same because we need to be able to store all the messages from a super step in memory. Um, there is a problem with large degree items which can cause uh, processing bottlenecks and memory issues on the machine which holds them. And lastly, the modifications to stochastic gradient descent are not exactly equal as in sequential solution because we are not always working on the latest version of the feature vectors but on the ones from the beginning of iteration because they were all sent in the beginning of iteration. We had a few unsuccessful tries to uh, come up with a better solution within giraffe model. And after that, we started thinking, okay, what would the solution be without any limitations of the model? And then if we can extend the model to support our solution. So um, on the next slide, I give you like, the details of how it works. But first, uh, we started by extending giraffe uh, with two things. We started heavily using worker data and added the concept of worker-to-worker -worker messaging. So before this, only vertices in the graph uh, were able to communicate with each other, and by adding these concepts, uh, we made workers essential part of the algorithm as well. And the way we represent the data is we have users as vertices and items part of worker data, and we'll see now what it looks like. So again, you have a set of machines which you want to use for your job, Users get loaded as vertices and distributed across your machines, but items are not vertices, they are inside of worker data. And what you need to do in order to, uh, to do the computation in the algorithm 
is to, at some point of time, get uh, each uh, user and item pair at the same machine, so you could do update on those, uh, on the ratings for that user and item pair. So in order to do this, we put uh, workers in a circle, and we'll be sending uh, item sets across the lines of this circle. Uh, this way, by doing a number of workers iterations, we'll get each item set on each machine. Uh, so whenever an item set is on a machine, we do updates on the ratings, which are for the vertices which that machine owns, and the item set which is currently on that machine. So the whole algorithm will look, as I said, like number of worker super steps, and you always do updates for the ratings, which are currently like both user and, feature, user and item feature vectors are on that machine. Now we can see that the problems which I outlined on the previous slide are not there anymore. First of all, the amount of network traffic doesn't depend on the number of examples anymore. It doesn't even depend on the, on the number of users. It just depends on the number of items because the only thing which you're sending are item feature vectors. Um, additionally, the memory required, again, like the same, since the problem uh, with the memory was uh, the amount of messages which need to be stored, uh, it's again decreased to the number of items instead of number of features, uh, number of uh, known ratings. Uh, we don't have problems with high, uh, high degree items anymore because all the, uh, all the ratings are stored inside of the user and the uh, uh, degree of the item doesn't, uh, doesn't play the role in the, in the memory calculations. Uh, and lastly, modifications in stochastic gradient descent are exactly equal as in sequential solution because we're always working on the latest versions of user and item feature vectors. Um, sorry. Uh, okay. Damn it, I'm sorry. Uh, now we have to do all this. So uh, after you get the output of collaborative filtering, uh, basically you get user and item feature vectors. Uh, and uh, that's not what you usually want. What you usually want are the recommendations for the user. Uh, so you want to know what are uh, the items which have largest inner product with each user feature vector. Uh, and the simplest solution would be looking at each user and item pair. Uh, but for the data sets which we are handling, which are a billion users and tens of million items, that becomes uh, too complex uh, to do. Uh, so in order to overcome that problem, we put all item vectors inside of a ball tree. And ball tree is a binary tree where each leaf node represents some subset of vectors. And each inner node represents a ball which surrounds all the uh, vectors from that subtree. So this is what it would look like. Um, now there are formulas which based on the query vector and the center and radius of the ball say what is the largest possible inner product for any vector within the ball and your query vector. And using that formula we can do greedy tree traversal by first going to more promising branches. Uh, we can prune subtrees by not even visiting some of the subtrees for which we know can, that can't contain better solution than what we already found. And this proved uh, in practice to be 100 to 1,000 times faster and uh, made it fast enough for our data sets. Apart from scalable solutions for collaborative filtering and recommendations, uh, we have many additional features which made it, makes it easier to play with different parameters uh, and get better results. So um, during each iteration of your algorithm, you get information about what is mean squared error, what is average rank of each of the known examples, precision recall. We have a way to combine stochastic gradient descent and alternating least squares, which in practice showed to uh, get better quality of results in some cases. Uh, there are other objective functions we can use. So for example, for data sets, where uh, you don't have explicit rating provided, but you only uh, can infer the, how user likes some item based on his behavior. There is a different formula, much more complex than the one I showed you, uh, <laughs> which, you <laughs> which you can use. Uh, optionally, you can add biases to account for the differences between users who tend to rate everything high and users who tend to rate everything low. Uh, we have degree-based uh, regularization to deal with our, because our uh, item data has very skewed degrees, uh, and this helps us uh, overcome numerical problems. 
And in the future, we want to try to optimize for the ranks instead of the errors in ratings, which should get better recommendations in the end. Uh, and for data sets when there is no negative signal, for example, with page likes data, you only know what user likes, but you don't know what he doesn't like. Uh, we have a way to pseudo randomly add negative ratings f in order to make the algorithm produce something useful. And this is all very nice, but how does it compare with, uh, with other platforms in, in this field? So Spark MLlib is a very uh, popular framework which has one of the leading implementations uh, in the domain. Uh, and in July this year, they published uh, the numbers for alternating least squares uh, solution for collaborative filtering. Uh, experiments were conducted on scaled copies of Amazon Reviews dataset. And you can see that we are up to 10x faster than uh, Spark is. Additionally, um, we can handle over 100 billion ratings while the largest uh, experiments that was conducted conducted was on 3.5 billion ratings. And uh, just to note, so the quality of our result is exactly equal as from the Spark MLlib, because the computation is done is completely the same, it's just that we do the distribution in a different way, and that's why we get it faster. Uh, and this slide is just to show how easy it is to use uh, our system, plug in different data sets and uh, play with parameters, uh, which makes it unpair with other solutions in the area. So to conclude, in this talk, I presented our scalable implementation of collaborative filtering on top of Apache Giraffe. It is highly performant. It can handle over 100 billion ratings, which is about two orders of magnitude larger than the largest published data sets at this point. Uh, I also presented our fast top K item recommendations solution. And proving its value, this has been used in a group and pages recommendations at Facebook. Three minutes if somebody has questions. No? What do you mean? So we randomly group them and that gives good enough balance. Uh, So it's not the point that he's your friend, it's just the point that like you like similar stuff. Okay. That's but uh, my question is, so let's say you presented those two recommendations to me. The fact that I just, I don't do anything, is that fed back into the algorithm to say Tim probably doesn't care and then the fact that I say no, I don't wanna see this anymore, is that taken into this engine as well? So currently we don't look at that because when you get recommendations we don't know whether you actually saw them or you just didn't see them and that's why you didn't click on them and then you have like the X out feature, but that's used so little that it wouldn't give us enough information, like based on like how many likes you have comparing to how many of X out you have. So you don't group based on dislikes as well then? No, okay. because yeah. <laughs>